now we get ready for Boston College. Last home game. And listen, it's our last home game. And let me just tell you, from experience, and for all those seniors and every senior that I've had over the past 22 years, senior day only means this. I got to win. <laughs> you got to win. It's about winning on senior day and finding that win in your last home game at Notre Dame Stadium. So we'll go back to preparation, get our work done, and get back on the football field. <laughs>
because I think we know Sierra is going to be able to do the things that he's shown. Now it's Jonas Gray. You know, he's going to really be the deciding factor there for us. If he can give us the kind of play that we think he can, it's going to lighten the load on those two freshmen because they've got to come in and, and compete. Chris works from the center. They give it to Gray. And Gray is short. And the ball comes loose, and the Bulls have it. And that is number six, Kayvon Webster with no one in front of him. You talk about a deflator. After the first week, when I didn't play as well as I wanted to, um, you know, I, I could have won a bunch of ways with it, and, you know, he, he could have won a bunch of ways with it. And on that Sunday, we came in and we watched the film, and he said he, was, he, said he was upset. And I, and I thought he was upset because of what, the mistake I had made, but it was because he didn't play me more. Um, that just meant a lot. I did have that conversation. We did talk about it. And, and it's one of those that we really needed to, uh, uh, to, to lay it out there and, and understand that, okay, listen, Jonas, I've got to do a better job too. I think when by saying that, it, it, it cut down and broke down, you know, whether that, that wall that's in front of you and saying, listen, it's not all about what I say it is. I, I gonna, I'm human. I'm going to make some mistakes too. And where's your confidence right now in Jonas Gray? My confidence, we, he's got to go back out there. You know, he's got to play for us. And, and uh, he's physically able to do it. Um, mentally, he's got to be able to do it. Um, we're not sitting him down. He's got to play for us against Michigan. And he's got to play for us all year. He, he just pulled me aside and he said, you know, how do you, how do you want to be, be remembered? Um, what do you want your legacy to be? Um, he said, you can be one of those guys who, he said, I can go two ways with this thing. I can, I can be one of the guys who, you know, Let's that affect me for the rest of the season, or I could take it, learn from it, um, use his motivation, and be known as the guy who did it the right way, who you know, who persevered through things, and who was able to you know, come back and play hard through adversity. Um, and he and he said that he's hoping I take that route. Did those words stick with you in the, in the future weeks after that? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, because it, I, I, it was it was the good thing about it was that he, you know, he just knows his players. He knows which guys to you know light a fire under. You know which guys to you know kind of talk to, um, and, and when he came to me, uh, the way he did, with nothing but positive words, it, it just meant a lot. But they were coming anyway, and the Irish trying to run away from it, and they do again. They bust for another first down with Gray. Jonas Gray was the ball carrier. Seven. Gray again on the sweep. Hits the edge and a lot more. Touchdown. Eifert in motion. Gray. For the touchdown. They rush three and here's a handoff to Jonas Gray. Gray cut back. Cuts up the field. What a nice run by Jonas Gray. He picks up the first down on third and long. A 19-yard gain. They needed 17. He got 19. Now, I want you to remember he's 235 pounds. This is not complicated. Forget about blocking. Forget about all the rest. It's a sprint draw. We'll just watch his feet at 235. Cut back. Make you miss. Vertical. Get off the block. Are you kidding me? You could conceivably break the single season yards per carry average of the most famous player in Notre Dame football history. Does that kind of just blow your mind? It does. Um, I talk about it all the time when I'm, when, I'm in, when I'm walking through the locker room, when I'm showing my family the locker room, I say it's just been a journey. And I never thought I would be here um, after the three years and the way it went. Um, I just kept, you know, kept pushing. 
and it's just it's crazy that I have an opportunity um, to leave a, a type of legacy like that and stamp uh, myself in the Notre Dame history. It's crazy. It's his final home game playing for you this weekend. What are your memories going to be of Jonas Gray? You, you know, I always have fun memories of this guy. This guy is a fun guy to be around, and, and his demeanor was great. You know, I, he, he's funny and he's articulate and, and he's mature, and, you know, and he's fun to be around. And he, it's really been good for our room. It's been good for our younger players to be around and see how, listen, I'm having success here because I earned it. I, I did the right things and earned it. And, and that's really, that's the beauty of what we do. And, you know, listen, he always, like, you know, listen, no, you know, a lot of the players I've had over the years, I have absolutely loved his people. He's one of them. Uh, I, I keep telling him he's allowed, you know, at my house anytime but supper time. So, you know, he's, so he doesn't eat me out of the house and home. As you look at your whole Notre Dame experience, what do you think you will tell people when it's over about when you sum it up? Was it good? Oh, it was great. I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I, I go back and I think about, you know, other places I could have went. And I say that, you know, I, the success I had at Notre Dame and the things that I went through is going to prepare me for the rest of my life. I don't think I would have gotten that anywhere else. Um, we were around great teammates, uh, guys who will be lifelong friends, who have the same goals as me. Um, and it's, it's, been a, it's been a long journey. Um, I would just tell people, if they ever get in a position where, where they're facing adversity, to stay the course. Um, believe in yourself and never give up. And make sure you surround yourself around good people. God, country, Notre Dame. This phrase, etched above the doorway to the Basilica of the Sacred Heart, is a calling for Notre Dame men and women across the globe. Faith in God, service to country, and loyalty to Notre Dame. On this Veterans Day weekend, we remember and honor the Notre Dame men and women who have been living by these words since the founding days of Our Lady's University, when Father Edward Soren and the Holy Cross priests served our country during the Civil War. When the Civil War came, Father Soren sent his very best young priests and wonderful Holy Cross sisters to minister to the troops and to care for the wounded. Father William Corby was assigned as chaplain during the war and is well known for giving general absolution to the Irish Brigade at the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863. Throughout the years, especially in times of conflict, the sons and daughters of Notre Dame have dedicated themselves to serving our country for a greater cause. The idea of serving my country was just so much bigger than anything that I could possibly um, fathom. I think it's that kind of camaraderie, it, it's teamwork. It's understanding that you are a part of something that is bigger than you are. In my class specifically, class of 1968, 20% of my classmates uh, were commissioned officers and hundreds more had served and, and fulfilled a responsibility, whether it be uh, as a draftee or as a reservist or as a National Guard. It's that kind of commitment that uh, God Country Notre Dame really stands for. Legendary football coach Frank Leahy, along with many Notre Dame students, student athletes and alumni, fought for our country during World War II. Returning veterans took up residence on campus in a military-style housing complex called Vetville, and a young priest named Reverend Theodore Hesburgh was the chaplain. We set up an ROTC program at the University of Notre Dame, and we brought in thousands of young men who wanted to be officers in the service, and we literally sent Notre Dame naval officers all over the world on ships and planes. Notre Dame has always been their front and center when people had to stand up and fight to defend their country, and I'm very proud of that. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Notre Dame is one of only a few universities in the United States with an ROTC program currently represented by all branches of the military. It's in our DNA to be part of this nation and part of the, the service to this nation through the military. Notre Dame stands for the best of America, the best of higher education, the best of loyalty, best of patriotism, the best of honor. These are all wonderful virtues, and these are the kinds of virtues that grow in the lives of our students who spend four years on this campus. Today, we honor those veterans who have served our great country, particularly the sons and daughters of Notre Dame. Thank you. 
Thank you for all you've given this country. You've made us a more secure nation, a better nation, a nation that serves its higher ideals. So from all of us at Notre Dame and around this country, thank you for your service.